Hi folks, it's Gary from the Average Tabletop Gamers. Today I'm going to be doing a review of Games Workshop's Blackstone Fortress expansion, Trade to Command. Over to Sven to do his thing with the graphics. So, what do we have here then? Well, Gary took a trip to his local friendly gaming store and uh, having low will and impulse control managed to pick up the latest expansion. It was released yesterday here locally um, and it was a really beautiful little set. Um, I'm going to dive into it straight away. Uh, I'm not going to do this as an unboxing because I'm not going to lie, I couldn't resist opening up and having a good read through of it. And I've already assembled the figures in it as well because um, I want to get them painted. So, what have we got then? Um, it's a lovely bit of cover and artwork as usual from Workshop and this expansion covers the uh, Grendish 82nd who are a chaos, a traitor guard unit effectively and there's a, a, a traitor commissar and a traitor ogre which are the key figures that you get within the box. So what are you getting for your money? You're actually getting the usual things you couldn't expect from Games Workshop in its expansions. Um, you're getting the exploration cards um, which is great for um, uh, Blackstone Fortress players. This actually gives you a varied way of setting up the the board. It'll give you different challenges. And if you notice with all the expansions they're doing, they're doing little symbols in the corner there. Now what this does, this tells you it's specific to this, this box set. And if you need to take it out, you can extract them and find them quite easily. So that's, that's good from Workshop. You're getting plenty of cards in here, which gives you a lot more variety on your game and your challenges and what you need to do. So... The essence of this is you've got the Heart of Corruption, which is what the exploration's for, and our protagonist that we don't want to meet, uh, the Chaos Ogrin and the Traitor Commissar. You've got the encounter cards for them. Um, this allows you to put them within the, the cycle of cards that you play. So you'll come up against them with Traitor Guard, you'll come against them with the Spindle Drones and the usual plethora of creatures you might meet on your Blackstone Fortress exploration. Um, but what are you getting for your book? I'll be honest. These guys are fairly savage. Now, a lot of the rules for these are online. By all means, check them out. Um, this Chaos Ogren acts as a bodyguard, which is what the Ogrens are for um, in some of their iterations in 40k now. But this guy can act as a, a wound sponge for the Commissar if he's adjacent to him. Because he's a huge creature, he's in a square, he goes in a square on his own. So he can't share a square with the Commissar. So that's fair enough. Well, you know, you'd expect that. That's okay. It's within the rules. Um, he's actually got a blasphemous icon running all the way through his body, um, which is absolutely beautiful on the model. Um, and it's an absolutely stunning element, what makes it a lovely piece of kit. Now, you probably get a chance to have a quick look at the rules there. Um, this guy's got a claw grab uh, attack, which is absolutely savage. Um, any explorer he attacks have got to make an agility roll first. If not, they've got to re roll any successes or critical su successes when making defense rolls. And it gets two d8s in melee. It's absolutely brutal. Um, so he's a savage bit of kit. Um, he's got his blasphemous icon. So on a critical su success, he gets more movement, which means he's a bit scarier. And the monstrous bodyguard, like I said, he can be used as a, as a wound sponge. And he does have 12 wounds. So he's a bit of a brute. The Commissar as well, it seems that he's a little bit of a glass hammer for me. He's got a, a slow movement of two. He's only got two wounds. Um, he's a large size, so he's the equivalent of a beast man in the game. However, he's got his crushing blow from his power fist, which rolls 2d12, which is ridiculous. So no defense roll can be made against a grievous wound inflicted at a bolt pistol at a range of one. So if he's right next to you, this guy is just just brutal he's absolutely savage in combat you've got to keep away from the, these guys to say the least um, and they can soak up a lot of damage so it'll be interesting to try and fight against them so what are the models like so let's do a little bit of close-up for you there so you get two alternate heads for the ogre and um, i've got i've assembled this one with, which has got like mutated tusks similar to the chaos terminator um, and he's got a hose that leads down into this little respirator unit on the side there now the only thing with this, um, the other alternate head, I, I couldn't see anything that fits into the respirator uh, to block it off, so that was a bit of an odd choice. But other than that, it's very, very nice. Uh, because it's a little bit the push fit, you know, I did take a little bit of time putting it together, but as you can see, 
down the side here I've got a bit of a mold line I've got a bit of a gap I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of fill in which isn't great um you know I'm a decent modeler so normally I could avoid this kind of thing but hey ho that's what it is and similar with the uh, Trader Commissar, who's a lovely model, uh, one of the things I found was the head, when I tried to assemble him and put it together, kept pushing through on the push fit, which was a bit of a nightmare. But the detail on him is fantastic. He's absolutely lovely bit of kit there, as you can see. Um, there's a lovely relief detail of the um, kind of like the engraved or embossed look that they've got to the chaos symbols within him. But once again, I've got a bit of a savage gap there to fill. Um, I'm not an idiot when it comes to modelling. I could not have pushed that any harder together to make it fit. I think my other option would have been to remove the pegs and just gone for a seam fit instead. And to be honest, considering how much the kits cost, I'm probably going to explore that in the future to see if it gives me a better effect. Because um, it's, it's, a, it's a lovely model, if nothing else. So there, there you can there you see the in the game. In this expansion, sorry. And what else do you get? Well... You get the secret card uh, from the Heart of Corruption, which gives you a special thing. You've got to really complete the quest to do it. And I'm not going to lie, I've not completed the main quest in the game. I've not completed the Amble quest, and I haven't opened the cards yet. Um, I'm looking forward to the surprise. I know people are buying these uh, on, e on eBay and things like that, but uh, I'm looking forward to having these within my game. You also get some new uh, Archaeotech and Treasure and Artifacts as well. So you just get a, a, a plethora of architect to use, but you do need it. Um, and that becomes much more apparent later on. And when I looked through and had a look through this, there are some extra cards in here that you do need. There's these things called soul price cards. Now these are used with the new ship that you get in the expansion called the Eye of Vect. Um, it gives you an option when this ship comes in. It's a Dark Eldar pirate that's, that's running it. And what he does is you can use these is the ability of this to support you when you're in the game is you can pay the soul price to have either one of your activation dice or your destiny dice turned to a six, which is pretty powerful because a lot of the special abilities on your, your explorers only activate on a six. So this is really good. However, you need to pay the soul price and the soul price is actually some Archaeotech. Um, or the actual true soul prices you carry wounds over in your next adventure basically they're taking the rounds of blood from you so it's a pretty nifty little effect so that's what these soul price cards are for and as you can see you've got some other items in here as well um, so there's some minor items as well as the architect but these are the things you can use to pay off that soul price to take that advantage which is why this Dark Herald our pirate theory uh, where the Grand Shady 8 are he knows there's some things he wants to explore so what else do you get? Uh, as well on the card punch out area, you get this warp portal for the board, which is part of your objectives, as well as these uh, chaos icons and boxes and loot. You also get some, these are like special objectives. You've got to activate these. These are used within the missions, uh, as are these data slates that you get. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what the chaos icon symbol is for at the moment. So um, if anyone knows, put it in the comments. So, What's the final part you're getting in here? So, you get the assembly guide for the Traitor Commissar and the Ogryn. Um, I won't show you the assembly guide, you've seen them before. However, it does give you the 40k stats for them as well. So for all you 40k players out there, this is going to give you a taste of what your Chaos Guard could look like. So I'm very aware the camera's shaking a little bit there um, as I'm trying to multitask. So it's a very nice piece of kit. Okay, so that's really useful. What else do you get? So, you get the Heart of Corruption. Now, what is the Heart of Corruption? Uh, this card set, this gives you the um, the main mission, which is the end mission for the Heart of Corruption that you've got to attempt to do to complete the mission to open the secret um, uh, piece of architect card. And it also gives you a Heart of Corruption event table as well. So when you're doing this mission and exploring it based on the Heart of Corruption, this is the uh, events table you use instead to find out what's happening. And it gives you all the information for that. But finally, what do you get? Well, you get the Traitor Command introduction. So you get this little booklet, and in the booklet, you are getting the specific rules for the quest itself, how it works, kind of the overview I'm giving you now, um, but it's also giving you things like what to do after the quest, and that little bit of background and fluff to give you a bit more information about it. It tells you about the Eye of Vect, which is the ship. Um, any people who are into their Games Workshop lore will know that Astrobile Vector has been a long-standing Dark Elf character, uh, 
Dark Elf, Dark Eldar character, sorry. Um, but reading more on the background as it's advanced by a workshop is really great to see. So, what do I think? I'll, I'll be honest, I think this is a really great little set. But I am going to give a bit of a caveat here. This set cost me £37.50, which is pretty, pretty tasty for the price cost of it, considering I'm getting these two models and the cardstock. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you're getting the game design, Gary, you're getting the quests, you're getting all these extra cards, which is pretty good. However, that price point is pretty hefty. When you consider the main game's 95 quid, you know, that's very expensive for getting two extra figures. Um, what I'm kind of hoping for from Workshop in the future is maybe something where they do add-ons where it includes uh, how to use your, your existing figures as bad guys in the way that you did with the very original Warhammer Quest game, which is one of the great things about it. Um, I could, I'd love to see an, an, an orc themed or a necron th well I've got necrons so that would be especially good but like uh, the, the Blackstone Fortress has always had that are they necron technology what's going on here no one knows what it is um, but I'd love to see some of the existing races plotted into this in the groups so rather than having the one had the, the, the really hard hitting bad guys you've got here in the in the bodyguard and the commissar like units like units of orc boys units of orc freebooters uh, um, whatever they're calling them these days um, you, you know things like that in the game uh, necrons turning up with the necron you know uh, uh, necron flares that kind of thing I'd like to fight against some different groups of units so that would be great to see i know technically you could work it out and do it yourself but i'd love to see something from uh, the um the original source and i'll also give you a bit of caveat on this as well is i got the amble expansion and this is my example this is my amble that i painted okay this was a 30 pound expansion and when you consider i put the ogre in next to the amble in size <laughs> oh, that amble is absolutely massive in comparison so why am i paying that much more for this set i'm not too sure um obviously work for shop lavish rhythm and reason behind that but that's what that is but would it stop me from buying it not really um because i did buy it after all um i'm a bit of a collector so i want to keep this going as a collection as i'm going um i will because i will be playing this in a few years time absolutely it's a brilliant game so that's my review of Blackstone Fortress Traitor Command Bad Games Workshop. But I also bought while I was there these Warhammer Quest Endless Peril cards. These cost you a tenner. Um, and what are you getting in here? Anyone who's played the game knows as well, you can actually spend a lot of time in the elevators, <laughs> um, not actually going anywhere, um, and you've actually got things to do. This is actually an extra set of cards, which gives you even more map layouts to give you even more variation to the game. And it also gives you masses of encounters, little extra dungeon things you can explore. Um, so there's extra things you can do all the way through, like little challenges and, and things you need to get, get your way through. So I think this is a, an actually a really great little set. These were a tenner. Um, you're getting a lot of cards. Could these be cheaper? Potentially. Um, you know, because ultimately it's just card stock. But... I think these are really good, uh, and I've really enjoyed these for a tenner. So I spent about 50 quid yesterday getting all of this. Um, a little bit pricey, um, you know, because the game's the game's 95, but go for it. So why not check out our social media channels? We'll be scrolling along somewhere here. Um, so that'll tell you that you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Follow our feeds there. And if you like the channel, by all means, subscribe. We'd love to hear from you as well. And if you've got a bit of feedback, please put some comments on there. I'm trying to improve my camera work. I did get, did get a comment about uh, maybe making someone a touch C6. So I'm trying to be a little bit better, but I'm working on my own here doing this. So there you go. Blackstone Fortress Trader Command. Worth a punt. A touch pricey for what you're getting. But uh, it looks pretty exciting to play. And I'm looking forward to getting my teeth into it. Thanks very much.